Do you have uh, certain preferences and actions that may be harmful to others? Um, be aware of how the system teaches you um, and others about certain groups of people. So thinking, okay, what was I told about this group of people? Is that really true? Um, and also um, not letting um, one sole experience with a group of people inform your opinion on that entire group of people because they're but one person and they have a whole factor of experiences that make them a unique person and not just a sole representative for that community. Um, uh, and then um, be open to conversations about your bias. Um, they're not fun conversations, but they're important ones. Um, and opening yourself up to that opportunity to grow and learn is really good and powerful and important. Um, even if it might hurt, but that hurt is growing pains. Um, they really are. Um, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not unlearning um, those things that you've been um, had forced into you um, through society. Um, work to overcome your implicit bias, educate yourself and inform others. Um, and then lastly, uh, don't be a bystander when others are biased also. Um, speak up and intervene. Um, and Fuji's going to do a quick rundown of what that yeah. Um, intervening can look like and what the couple of options are. Yeah. So very quickly because we do want to get to questions. Um, but when you do, uh, talking about don't be a bystander and speaking up, there is generally like two ways to do it. Um, is calling out and calling in. I think calling out has been becoming more of like a word that's used these days because it's something that happens a lot because we're more educated, we're more verbal into talking about the problems we're having just as um, the, just the world around us. Um, so the difference with calling and calling out is calling out, as we know, is um, publicly addressing someone uh, of like what they said or did was harmful. Um, so that's where you do it publicly. And then calling in is having a one-on-one -on, -one on that person to bring a person to the side and explain um, why that what they said was harmful or what they did was harmful. So these two different things, I think both are good in certain situations. So it's really situational, right? Um, if it needs to be done publicly so that that person knows right away and that people around them know as well is a nice way to do that. And calling in sometimes is better because uh, the one the person might not oh, like react as much if you talk one on one. It's more intimate. So it really depends on the situation. Um, but the number one important thing that I can't leave out is that make sure that you yourself is safe before calling out or calling in. You know, these, uh, these discussions that start sometimes does become um, like uh, activated or ag aggravating to that other person. So when you do do those kind of stand up for something, speak up for something, make sure you are safe before doing so. All right, um, and so then the other part of, you know, when these bias incidents happen, um, oh, excuse me. Um, probably a bug. Um, so, um, when these incidents happen, on one end, you want to address the person who's actively aggressing against another person and saying something that's harmful, but also interacting with the person who had this harmful thing said to them um, will also be really important. And in supporting them, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, so first off, especially depending on the severity of what was said, um, the person who had the thing said to them uh, will probably be semi-distraught or shaken, um, or even completely activated. Um, so make sure that they're okay, that they have the space and support to let them process the situation, um, ask them what they need. Um, also, if they're continuing to be harassed, uh, stand by them and intervene and get the other people to stop. Um, because we just shouldn't be harassing anyone, regardless of if it's motivated by categories of difference or not. Like, let's just not be assholes, a concept. Um, uh, and then most importantly, like I said, ask them what they need. Uh, this is the most important part because they're the one being affected by the situation, and so they should be the priority. Um, if they're like, hey, can I just process this with you? Absolutely. If they're like, hey, I just need to like go like get some space away. Like, okay, hey, I need to talk to this person who's my support system. Okay, like whatever you need, um, and making sure that uh, you can facilitate within your power however they can get what they need to feel safe. Um, in fact, part of it also may be um, separation from that person throughout the event, or having someone by them if that person continues to be at the event might also be another important thing. 
Um, so doing whatever you can in your power, like I said, to facilitate whatever they need. Um, so yeah, in closing out, Miranda's just going to give us a few like last reminders, uh, and then we can do some questions before we wrap up. Yeah, so the big thing is if anything happens, any crisis happens, any harassment happens, let the event planners know so that they are aware and they can assess the situation correctly. Um, another one is to, uh, for a, a victim of a crisis or just a person, the people dealing with it, um, recommend a safe space or a break space. Um, I know you may not have one, but maybe it's a stepping away, maybe it's a place that they can get water, snacks, uh, a quiet atmosphere, just aim to diffuse uh, stress and uh, reduce the stress and help the individuals. I know we talked about last session uh, with uh, regarding to the safe space or like everything that the quiet may not necessarily be like something that can be possible here or if there's like uh, headphones or something just to kind of reduce noise or like you know earmuffs or whatever um, and just to kind of like um, remove that uh, yourself or whoever is being affected from the situation like I don't know if there's an area where um, uh, role playing or anything, anything doesn't happen, like just like um, maybe like over um, farther away, so that um, that person can like you know um, center themselves and uh, that um, there's a separate space, but not too far away. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that it's an accessible enough distance that anyone can go to and from if they need to. Um, also, uh, we have to be aware that victims uh, or anyone really uh, reacts different uh, and they are all valid reactions. So if you are met with an anger, uh, with anger from someone, that is a valid response to oppression. Um, they, honestly, anyone does not owe anyone to be calm and collected when they're being hurt by others. And so that's just valid to understand and to recognize that those emotions are there. Um, Silence or not wanting to speak about the event is also a valid response. It may just be really difficult for them, or they may just need time. They may not even want to talk about it at all, and that is completely valid. Um, and then just remember that their safety is the most important thing, as well as yours. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Do we have any questions <laughs> about anything in the. About crisis, what we talked about, or just in general? about us, about what we, like, no. what we teach about, whatever. Yeah. So what is recommended when you're approaching people that you don't know uh, how to address them with pronouns? I mean, yeah. That's a super good question. Yeah, um, normally the best thing to do is establish a precedent. Um, so introduce yourself first, like, oh, hi, my name is uh, Colton, uh, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. So offering your pronouns first, um, establishing that you're um, a person who's safe and who understands um, how pronouns work and are wanting to get their pronouns in order to respect them. Because um, sometimes the just straight up asking someone else their pronouns without giving your own at first can seem kind of awkward, especially depending on the phrasing. Um, if someone comes up to me and is like, oh, what are you? I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, offering your pronouns first, um, along with your name, um, and then asking, you know. Like an icebreaker sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so just being like, oh, my name is Colton, my pronouns are they, but theirs. What are your name and pronouns? I so, gotta say, like, Growing up, that was something that you wouldn't normally ask. Right, you would have changed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. gonna be good. Yeah. Yes. It's it's great that you're that you're learning and that you're growing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's honestly yeah. the best we can hope for. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Just so you know that, like it, like you will probably make mistakes. People make mistakes. I oh. have made mistakes. The, the the thing is, is to just acknowledge, apologize, and then work to be better. Don't call too much of attention to it. It's just like, just move on. Correct, and move on. And, um, so I, this is more of a question about like being taken seriously, because like I'm a tiny person, and yep. a lot of people who are around me are my size or bigger. And if I'm going to try and be a situation where people are just larger than me, and don't take me seriously either because I am female, or because I'm tiny, or maybe my race, how do I handle that situation? Is it just better to go grab someone else, or does that kind of almost establish the fact that they don't have to respect me in that position? 
Well, I think we talked about that you, no matter what, I think you'll be in pairs, so uh -huh. I think you'll have mm -hmm. another person to okay. rely on. But I would say to bring someone else into a situation would probably be like if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's hard because not being taken serious because of bias and stuff like that, it's hard because it's hard to diffuse and like try to educate and like talk through it while they're being activated. Um, I will first, before you do that, worry about your safety because you are smaller than them and whatever, like, whatever the reason, like, you, you, like, make sure that you're safe. And then, of course, try, like, do everything that you think is needed for the situation and just take those steps and, um, and if it doesn't diffuse, and, you know, if uh, you can bring someone else, but if that person didn't defuse it either, then we call authorities. Yeah. So it's very much a step-by-step -step to where you would get to calling another person. But all, we, all you can hope for and all, like, everyone can hope for is that you can, you can defuse the situation. If you can't, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. And it's also okay to also know that if people aren't listening to you, you can totally use the line of, hey, if you're not going to listen to what I have to say, I will get someone that will make you listen, or I will call the cops mm -hmm. for anything, if they're fighting or anything like that. Because usually, when you even breathe out the word cops, people are like, okay, mm -hmm. let's stop this. Don't want the cops called, don't want all the right. paperwork, don't need all that. Okay. Um, but if it's just like people not taking you seriously, you can be like, hey, mm -hmm. if you don't cut the shit out, we're going to have an issue. Like, we're going to get someone else, and then definitely make sure that you listen to them because this is, yeah. they, they have to be respectful. And also, like, turn their bias kind of against them. Like, um, I kind of had a similar problem, not because of, like, size or anything, but because of my gender presentation when I was working at a group home for teenagers. Um, and so kind of, like, flip, flipping it against them, like, okay, like, I know you're not taking me seriously, and I know you're not going to take me seriously. I'll go get someone that you will take serious, and they're not going to be happy, first, about what you're doing, and second, not going to be happy about the fact that you're not taking me seriously, if you want to deal with that. Um, and, and just be straight up acknowledging, like, you can take me seriously and minimize the consequence you're going to be experiencing right now, or you can not take me seriously for all your pride and just, like, add to the list of shit you're going to have to deal with. That's your choice. But most importantly, like, know your own limitations. As a minority right. person, like, as I, I understand that it's, like, there are some things that, um, it's just, like, you don't want to deal with that shit. So just make sure right. that you're you're doing what's best for you, but also, um, you know, doing uh, whatever you feel like you can. Yeah, I hope that's, like, that's something that everyone can relate to. Uh, sometimes there are situations that's very great too, so it, it's just the effort to try to make it the best. Did you have a question? I was just going to say, uh, in my training, the uh, way we overcome that, because uh, I went through school for law enforcement, mm -hmm. and I worked with a lot of females, and they were mostly tiny, yeah. so you're not always going to have backup there. Um, it's giving them options mm -hmm. and, and not not such an aggressive manner until we need to. So, like, all right, here's our options here. You can listen to me and calm down, or, you know, I can go with somebody, or I can call the cops. Mm -hmm. it's right. Would you rather talk to me or yeah. somebody else? Yeah, would you rather have it taken care of here and now? We can all go on and have a good night. This, this Now this choice is on you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it removes that from you, puts it on the person, so it's much easier for them to decide. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a question that I think might be a little bit complicated, and it's kind of a two-parter. Um, so I'm going to try and phrase it as cohesively as I can. Yeah. Um, on the subject of calling in and calling out, particularly uh, calling out for a situation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as though I see this most commonly on social media mm -hmm. and in my personal life most commonly on social media regarding um, regarding Ant Guard and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, is there for, so calling out behavior, is there a is there a limit or a form of calling out behavior that runs the potential of being damaging um, even if you are attempting to perform like a good service. So like for notable examples that I have 
that I, I feel as though I've witnessed is, um, for instance, one person of a, a certain degree of privilege trying to speak about the, uh, the experiences of people who may have different or less privileges than that, yep. and harming or damaging that person of that particular privilege who is being spoken about. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another notable example is perhaps the person who is being called out um, may be saying something that is damaging, but they um, are not speaking from a uh, from a, a, a place of intending harm. Right. They are ignorant yeah. of the situation, and it, it feels like the dogs are released on yeah. them, you know? Right. So is there a particular, like, way to make a judgment call or a strategy to perhaps not overdo it, as perhaps I'd put it? Or is that kind of something that you sort of have to, like... Work on and feel, you know, feel out and get better at. I feel like if you have any reservation about the imp impacts that it would have if you called them out publicly, then you should call them in. That's one thing. It's like there are certain situations where I think that calling out can be beneficial, but if you feel like it will, you know, make an individual feel uncomfortable or turn someone off from, like, you know, Aunt Guard in general or anything, like, um, there are situations where I feel like it is publicly appropriate to call someone out, but if you feel as though, like, that might, you know, damage them as a person, and it was, like, a genuine mistake, then I feel like in situations like that, calling in could be appropriate. And mm -hmm. it could be vice versa, you know, calling in a person if they continue to do the behavior, calling out instead, because, um, like, if you talk to them in person, and they don't change their behavior, then that's not even, like, a calling, calling out problem, it's, like, a, a them problem, mm -hmm. so to call, it's, Calling out is important in the sense that you need to let people know that this person is indeed doing something wrong and everyone around them, if they are feeling uncomfortable, that they're valid in the fact that they, like harmful things, are being, harmful things are being said and that's like telling everyone that, hey, this is harmful and I'm, I'm acknowledging it and I'm letting everyone know that this is harmful to certain people. And, and like, yes, does it suck to be kind of like the sacrificial lamb in that sense, like yes. when those things happen? Yes, it does suck. But also, you know what else sucks? Systemic marginalization and societal oppression. <laughs> like, like, okay, like, like, if you're really upset about being, like, made an example when you did this thing that was really harmful and you're not more so upset about the impact that you had on others, like, we really need to have a conversation about that. <laughs> like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I will. Oh. <laughs> Um, I will also um, note, though, that some people, when they're called out, called in, they will not change. Yep. They will not change. And oh, I, I, I believe that's a thing. No, yeah, <laughs> I, it's really upsetting, like, for myself, too. I definitely have multiple examples of me calling out someone, um, them getting aver ag uh, aver aver sorry, English not my first language, <laughs> aggravated. Um, and no matter how like nice or how explanatory mm -hmm. my response is, they will not change, and then I will have to withdraw because my mental energy is not enough for this person. But what I feel good about in that situation is that I tried. I tried to give them information, and even if they don't listen, that like if they read it or they heard it, it is in the back of their mind. So to make anyone aware, even though they don't change it, I think is a win more than you know just dealing with it happening. I, I think also, um, sorry, to elongate the answer even more. Um, sometimes uh, it's beneficial to try calling in first. So if you see something and it's maybe the first time the person uh, has done anything like this, you can go up to them and be like, hey, can I just pull you aside and talk with you? And if they go, no, you can say whatever you want to me and everyone around. Because sometimes people who are intoxicated do that. Sometimes people who are activated can do that. They go, okay, so this is my issue. And then sometimes when you start talking about it, people are like, oh no, let's go somewhere quiet. And then you can be like, okay, I'll stop. And then we can actually finish discussing this. But sometimes people kind of need the, okay, this is actually serious. Like, I'm not playing right now. Like, I, I'm here to address the situation. And I'm going to make sure that you know that this was just something that was harmful. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, Vital, what you were saying, I think a lot of the issues with, specifically with social media and, like, letting the dogs out on someone, I think that really stems from, like, I know I've seen some posts or comments that have made me upset, and I want to say something because looking at the comments, either 
someone of a higher position that should be taken care of it has not yet, or even if they have, they haven't acknowledged that they have. So that makes me feel like, okay, well, maybe I should consider myself say, hey, what you're doing or what you're saying could be offensive or hurtful. So I think something that could possibly help that out is instead of people calling out other people, um, we should like have some sort of, uh, not rule, but I guess rule it in place where instead of calling someone out, hey, tag this person, and then like currently Theo is really right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. like, so, yeah, so, like yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like you know like tag. This, yeah. For example, Theo tag Theo, and then instead of just leaving it as a tag, maybe the person of power or higher, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, would uh, basically say I've got to take care of it, like acknowledging that you have stated this, and so that way people know that something is being done. Because I think what's really frustrating for me is if I know something's wrong and I feel like nothing's being done about it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Wow. Mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to express like being called out publicly, like frankly, sucks. Um, mm -hmm. Story time, I was in an organization statewide focused on social justice stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I used a slur that I wasn't aware was a slur, uh, having to do with swindling people about a certain ethnic group. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not kidding. I didn't know it was a slur. I was called out in front of a literal auditorium full of people, and it sucked. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to hurt people, so I learned a lot better. And something that was brought up last session that I think is really important. People, if they're calling you out, it's because they believe you can do better. Like there are people in Amphara that I don't bother saying shit to anymore because I know they're not going to change. You're just going to keep being hurtful, toxic people. And it really sucks and I just avoid them because I'm not spending my events arguing for my right to exist anymore. I've done that enough years. And you shouldn't have to. Yeah. Um, so if someone's calling you out, it's because they care about you. It's because they want that relationship to continue. It's because they think you can do better. So like, that's, I don't want to say it's an honor, but it's kind of an honor because it means you're important to them. Yeah. Either A, they think you can do better, or you're in a position of power and authority where you should do better. Because um, half the people I call out, I don't care if you want to be better. Like, I don't give a rat's ass, but you are in this position and you should be better. That's true. Um, yeah. Uh, I just want to say that also calling people out, uh, I was in the bathroom, so I apologize. Yeah. You've already said this. Uh, but calling people out politely, mm -hmm. uh, not being like, oh my god, you're such an a hole for oh, saying yeah. this, but instead being more like, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but that kind of language uh, is very offensive yeah. um, to people. Or this might be a better way that you can word that so that you don't end up in the situation in the future. Uh, I think language is a very important thing, mm -hmm. especially with how fluid language is, how often right. it changes. So it could very well be someone doesn't know that that word uh, is derogatory mm -hmm. um, at this point. And just teaching people the, the new language that people might prefer or that people might understand a bit better um, in this day. Uh, I think mm -hmm. just that's. And the important thing to remember. Going about it in a way I'm that, that, yeah. that doesn't activate people. If you come at it with aggression, it's just going to fuel more aggression. Exactly. Yeah. There's a certain level, though, where people read aggression into situations. One, because being called out really sucks. And two, because those implicit biases. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, I think most of y'all know here that I'm not a very aggressive person. But I've literally been called that angry teaser because I've corrected people on my program. Uh, and like, so there's certain times where people aren't being aggressive, but they're being read as aggressive because of marginalized identities. Um, you see it a lot with black women specifically. Um, they will be assumed to be super aggressive even when they're not being aggressive. Um, and then you get tone policing that's like 200 level. <laughs> All right, well... Thank you all. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.